Okay, so I was pleased that with the little bit of extra time um, that all of you uh, got in fairly respectable SketchUp models. So I am pretty pleased with the models and you should pat yourself on the back because we can't do it for you, virtual. Um, that you're, you're clearly getting, if not a mastery of SketchUp, you're, you're clearly showing you know, strong skills and uh, some really good uh, problem solving and resolution. So um, I was really pleased with that. The one thing is that you spend all this time on the model, but really what we're worried about is, or concerned about, is the images you capture. So there are a couple things that everyone, most of you were doing um, that we need to fix a little bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick actually um, one thing which uh, she can take care of really quickly. Romina here has a nice SketchUp model. Um, the one difficulty is there's all this extraneous stuff, all these things. So what we need to do is in each, and unfortunately it's gonna to have to be in each of these scenes, is go in and make all the imported SketchUp, I'm sorry, AutoCAD layers one through six, we wanna make them disappear. And hopefully nothing was modeled on those layers. Okay. I have some lines modeled on it. And I you just, have some lines that are modeled? Yeah. So I, for the Lumion when I, because I just uh, fixed that for the Lumion that I, had, I just had to like erase those lines. It was like the base lines. So Were they, they showing have, up in Lumion? Uh, I don't know. I just wasn't they sure. So. The lines, lines should probably not, shouldn't be showing up actually in Lumion. Okay. Yeah, so there's also some extra little construction lines here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then these just are part of those, I think, yeah. So, yeah, these guys, and then I think these lines, oh, they just have to be deleted. No big deal. That's what I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought they were part of the component, which would have still been easy enough to fix. So we've got a nice model, and I won't embarrass the rear view needs work, but maybe we won't look there. <laughs> but so you so I'm sorry, Michael, you could so so you can move things off the of layers if you put it on the wrong layer. Yeah. But you but then you could accidentally draw on your CAD layers. Yeah, and you want to try to avoid that. We had a little bit of that in the previous, in our first study. People accidentally wound up, the default is to draw on layer zero. Yeah. But a couple people accidentally drew on their CAD layers. Mm -hmm. And then what you'd have to do is delete. And another solution would be simply to delete the uh, imported CAD files. Once you're done, they're really just a guideline and you can just delete them too. Either solution is good. And if you have a lot of scenes already set up, it's probably faster to just delete the CAD files. So how, how do you let, move something from one layer to the other? Is there a, how do you move it? Yeah. Uh, select it, go to um, entity info. Oh. And then it's a little bit like AutoCAD. Yeah, a lot like CAD, yeah. And I am gonna put it on another layer. Mm -hmm. And can you merge all those seat layers? So that's something that came out of uh, SketchUp. That came out of imported models. And I'm not sure quite where they came from. Um, I don't know any way to do that. Oh, really? No. The layer the layer tool in, um, and it's in uh, SketchUp is a little bit crude. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not nearly the kind of finesse that you can get with um, AutoCAD. Yeah. With the flexibility of other uh, or other software we're familiar with. It's pretty basic. And for the most part, I don't really use layers very much, um, except when I need to create like a discrete component and I like to put it on a layer. Like I like to create a layer called roof 
and a floor slab layer and you know all those other things so I can control them from over here. So let me just update this. Okay. So one of the other things you could simply do is let me get move me out is these are blocks or components. I keep forgetting it's not AutoCAD. I could erase them. We don't, if we really, if you're done, you really don't need them anymore. Oh, also erase these construction lines because they'll show up um, if you export the image. Um, so this guy also gets deleted and So that's probably the more expedient way. If you're if you're really done with the modeling, you're just setting up scenes, you're kind of done. You you can you can delete those guys. Okay, so this is not a bad scene, but stuff's a little bit cut off. So one of the things that I would suggest for this inside view is we go to camera, field of view. And the focal length, it's coming back as focal length, 57 millimeters. Uh, if any of you have done photography, that's almost like a telephoto. It's bringing in things very close. So instead, I'm going to do a wide angle because that's what you do when you're inside the space. I'm going to type 28 mm. And I may want to move around a little bit. So I'll get my walking shoes on. And I'm a little low. Maybe I like that, maybe not. I want to look up perhaps a little bit, get the eyeball tool, look up. And I may check my eye height is like sit, 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 sitting height. Yeah, don't know why I couldn't get that out. But I find this is a more effective view. Make sure your sunlight and shadows are turned on. A couple of you didn't have that, but that's the case here. And I'm just going to update this view. So a lot of you still have to play with field of view. Some of you have um, an issue where you're not even in a perspective and we need to fix that. So- can, can, I'm sorry, Michael, can you show me how you update a view one more time? Oh, you click on it and right click. Just update, okay. And update. Oh, all right. You can also do it in the scenes. Okay, I was, I was working on a different one and I was, I was like just creating so many views because I wanted to tweak it so I didn't update anything, okay. Yeah. Good to know. So again, this is a little too close. I'm just going to put on some walking shoes and move away. Got to get those stairs hitting the ground. And they're also, they're made out of concrete, but eh, small stuff. Um, and here I want to make sure, oops, it's covered up in this I height, we want to we want to be standing up when we're outside. So five foot six. And I'm gonna just do a quick zoom window. There. So that's really filling up the screen. Okay, I want to show you a couple other things which people are still making mistakes. So I really don't have much in the way of modeling comments at this point. Uh, the modeling looks like it came out pretty well. Um, so let me just switch. Uh, and I'm just going to use Kira's. Um, and she didn't necessarily make these mistakes but I happen to have it up and it's a pretty, it's a good model of the uh, lounge in Mexico. So this is a mistake that I saw people were making. The files I gave you had the perspective turned off so you could do orthographic views. You typically don't want that. You want to be in perspective. So if I do camera, 
perspective. And I don't really want a bird's eye view of this. I want more of a nearly eye level view, something like this. And um, I'm gonna add that. So make sure you go to camera, just to emphasize this, perspective is turned on. I don't think for anything you're gonna do in your presentation board, you want it parallel projection. You always want it in perspective, okay? Then we get some interiors. Here's, here's one of her exterior views. So I just wanna show, Kira did a perfectly good job. She didn't, I'm just doing this as a simulation. Interior scene, uh, this view could be better. So what I would do in this is I go to camera, let me, camera, adjust the field of view. Okay, it's a 35 millimeter. I might take it lower, 28 millimeter. You go much slower than that, you start getting a lot of distortion, 28 mm. And then I want to back up a little bit. Uh, excuse me, uh, I don't see your screen. I don't know if uh, I'm the only one or. Don't see the screen? Screen, I can see it. Yeah, you might have a problem there, Abdullah. I see it. Oh, me too. Oh. I don't see it. You don't see my screen? No. I see it. Oh, you know what? It, um, it's a separate window, so I have to do, yeah, forgot. Okay, so I have to do, my, that is my mistake. Where is it? Oh, I just see the SketchUp model. Is there something else you were talking about? Yeah, instead, I need to switch to Kira's. Oh, oh, I was still staring at Romina's, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was in Kira's. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I'm here. I was like, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't moving the model or anything, but <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so still. anyway, here's what Kira did. It's a good view, but it could be a little bit better. So I'm going to go to camera. Thanks for pointing that out because I'm I'm sharing off my Mac today as opposed to the remote connection with the lab PC at the class. So I want to go to field of view and I want to change that. So I'm going to change it to 28 mm. And I'm going to back up with the walk tool, which there. I think Kira's view was good. I think this one's a little bit better. I may also straighten the perspective a little bit. So here I'm, I'm raising my eye and the sun's coming in and things are good and I'm going to update this. Now, this is a little tricky. I wanted to get a view from the interior from the bedroom. So this is the view that I created. It took a little bit of work. Um, I'm working on Kira's model and maybe if I had been able to turn off the roof temporarily, I actually had to use the walk tool to get in here. And that was a little cumbersome. So uh, let me just go back. Okay, so I need to do the walk tool. Okay, and the problem is if I briefly tap on uh, disabling collision detection, okay, that got me into the room. I'm not looking quite the right way just yet, so I'm gonna turn around. And I'm gonna back up. There we go. Maybe that's a little too far. And I'm also going to go to camera and field of view, check that 28 millimeters is good. 
Um, let me just check. I don't want to go much further. I'll show you what happens if you go to like a, a really low number, like 14 and, and it starts getting very distorted. So let me walk backwards. and adjust the view. I mean, that's not terrible, but it's a little, um, it's a little distorted. So I like this view. I'm gonna add this as a scene. Okay, so folks also what we're gonna go over this is people know, remember how to export your images from SketchUp. Even if you, do, I'm gonna go over it. And there's a little thing that actually with David, um, do we want to, in, keep the sky or do we want the background to be all transparent, do you think? Um, in general, I, I think they should add backgrounds. That's what I usually think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, is there any reason not to? Yeah, so what you do here is um, under styles, um, oops. Edit. And if you want right now, there's no ground. I'm going to turn off sky. So this is going to export this area here is going to save you time in um, Photoshop because it's already go it's going to export as transparent. Although the gray looks like the gray of the building. I just turned off the sky. I already had ground turned off but I'm also, okay. And now I'm gonna export this, file, export, 2D graphic. And we are going to do a PNG file. I'm gonna hit options, 4,000. Well, this is pretty big, but I would just as soon uh, go big. We can always go down. So I'm going to make sure at least one of the dimensions. Oh, maybe I'll make this. Maybe this is too big, 4,000. Okay. And I am going to create anti alias and transparent background. Hit OK. Export. Now this may not actually have exported as transparent because there's glass between us and the exterior, but at least it gives us an even area to work with. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop. Things are a little slower. This is an old computer that I'm using. I'm not linking to the college's computer. So my mouse is not cooperating. Come on, mouse. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going wrong here. Come on. Okay. And I am. Sorry. 
My mouse is not cooperating. Um, and Photoshop. And One. One. Okay, I'm having some technical difficulties. Um, It's all old stuff. Why is it not coming up? Go. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm having some problems with my mouse and here. So I don't want to take up any more time. Um, I'm just, I just don't know what's going wrong here. Let me just go back, sketch up. Let me try this one more time. File, export, 2D graphic. Portable network graphics, options, yes. Okay. And, oh, yeah, okay. This is where I got to go. I can't see what you're doing now. I know, I've switched windows. Oh, I'm just going okay. back, I'm, re I'm redoing this. Oh, okay. Um, is it a wireless mouse? Yeah, I need, I think, I need to get a wired mouse or something, it's just like, keeps appearing and disappearing. Now I should be able to open this. Um, just saved it here and I don't see it. Presentation techniques, hot slime line. Um, there. So after much effort, here is the image. And that should have taken me a lot less time. And clearly there's stuff that can be cropped down. Like we don't need to see all of this white wall here. It would have been nice if there was the bed in this bedroom, but um, this is a pretty good view overall. 
And because we're looking through glass, tinted glass, that background out there didn't come through as transparent. And now that I think I've got my computer cooperating, I can just show you how that works. And then I will see the mic. Um, Okay, so go here, no sky. And I go into um, file, export, 2D graphic. And make sure my options, 4,000 pixels, okay. And this is going to make the sky transparent. And let me go back to Photoshop. File, open, yeah. And there it is. And you can see now the sky with that checkerboard means it's transparent. Okay. So that's just a little bit, that was a little bit. So you basically go into the scene you want to export. You make sure uh, under styles, if you don't, if you want to be able to easily replace the sky, um, you turn sky off under uh, styles. And then, which is in here, styles, and you go to this icon, which is the environment, and you turn it, the sky off. We're still looking at Photoshop. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I be, should be sharing my whole desktop. Mm. We share. I have yeah. nothing embarrassing on my desktop. <laughs> Let's just do that. Now we won't have that problem. Am I jumping between these? Okay. So now everyone should see what I see. So back in uh, SketchUp, that was the scene we just did. Do you need to have a ground in order to capture the shadows coming off of the building? You probably uh, do. You should have a surface. Yeah. Um, it will, uh, you, there's a little option in uh, shadows. Um, this one on the hillside is a little bit tricky because you really do need to build the hillside. But if we switch, and this time you'll stay with me, here uh, under shadows, let me collapse that so I can see shadows more on faces and on ground. Oh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you need to have a ground. Like, well, so what's this on? What is this, where are these shadows sitting? No, the ground, the ground is just this horizontal plane. And, oh. uh, and the reason you turn that off is if you were doing something subterranean. Okay. Uh, okay. Because you wouldn't want the shadows. That's what <laughs> happens if the, the shadows were going across. Mm -hmm. So you might want to turn that off for, um, the one that the the lounge that's on the hillside and no sky or maybe sky maybe ground you know it just whatever makes it easier when you work in photoshop yeah i'm thinking that like the uh for the lounge i think they should build that topo yeah you have to it's not hard i mean I'm, we're not making it really complex I think everyone has who's done that model. I may be mistaken. You just um, yeah. go through. I think though that the cat has been deleted in this. Yeah. <clears throat> 
So all we're doing is we're, we're following the lines from the section and then extruding them. Oh, that's easy. I think that could be tough to duplicate in Photoshop as we've seen how tough it is from the desert, just finding the right perfect images. Like, um, I think if you have that topo underneath, it might be easier to build on and and you could also separate it, put it on its own layer in Photoshop, perhaps. Yeah, it might be best to keep it a solid color. Yeah, yeah. Rather than that grass. I, yeah, I think and, so too, definitely, yeah. And you can do that up here where there is an option for just shaded color. This That'll work particularly for this guy because um, there's really no textures or very few textures. So and then I just switch it up here. So it's a flat green color, which mm -hmm. will make it easier to substitute. So I went into uh, view and face style, shaded, shaded with textures shows the grass texture, which doesn't look very convincing. Mm -hmm. View, face style, shaded. And that just gives you a flat color, which I can, I, so I could export this. I think this is going to be the trickiest one in Photoshop. They had the easiest SketchUp yeah. model, but I think making this view look good in Photoshop is going to be tricky. I agree. Foreground, I mean, middle ground, back. And if everybody, I would, you know, when you're, when you're tackling Photoshop and adding some vegetation and environment, I would look at the original photographs as inspiration. Yeah, that yeah, that was another little comment is like, you may feel like you really, really know these buildings at this point. But this is the time now for you to go back and look at the photographs. Yeah, uh, a couple I noted that with a few people with their modeling was that you got so much into the modeling that you really need to go take a step back and look at what's actually happening with the building. And because the environment is such an important part of this building. Um, you really need, you need to show a rendering with the vegetation. So, um, and I showed you last time how you could bring that in using uh, Lumion, but um, that's one option, but you can also do it, you know, within Photoshop. So yeah, so you'll have the biggest challenge. The other, the other projects, the yard house really has a very minimal urban context, which we're not even gonna look at. Um, it turns its back on it. So it's really like not that essential. And the uh, other one that's gonna be easy is the hut because that's just sitting on a gentle grassy hilltop. So there's not a lot going on around that one. Okay, questions. So like I say, you know, for you folks, I think for the most part, not 100%, you got the SketchUp modeling down. It's now getting really good views and making them presentation quality. So um, that that's really your challenge from, from here on in. Um, when are the Photoshop uh, stuff uh, do? Next week, next okay. week. Okay, I thought it was this Sunday, so. Oh, no, I think I gave you right up until class. I think it was one o'clock. We could, we'll put up the screen after. Okay. We could talk about that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, that was all I had. Sketch up questions?
yeah, I um, really, you know, the advantage of you guys, it took me longer to go through them, but by you submitting your SketchUp models, you know, I was able to look at the craft of the model, a lot like if we were building physical models. And some of them had fantastic craft. Some of them had adequate craft. None of them had bad craftsmanship, you know? And some of them, a little bit like you, you choose uh, your battles. A couple of them, particularly the more complex ones is like, so there wasn't a lot of detail in some areas or it wasn't exactly right. Well, you know, we can kind of get by that you're in control here, you pick the views as long as we can get, you know, decent views. And the one advantage with the really nice models is you uh, in the, uh, for this hut is you have an abundance of really good views to work with here. They're almost all worthwhile. And I might look at a key large image that really tells the story. Maybe this is it, maybe not. And then maybe a band of smaller images that kind of takes us around the building and inside. Because um, I think Romina here and other people that have this particular project, um, I think that there's an opportunity for maybe even five or six really good images. But maybe- I had like five. Like <laughs> I had like five. Yeah. And I, I think all of them are good and contribute to the story, or at least you should go through processing them so that you'll have mm -hmm. them. I think with the uh, lounge project, uh, really um, two views from the interior, one or two views on the exterior. It's kind of summed up pretty fast. And the yard house, that's difficult. There's really two key views, one looking from the yard across to the building, to the house, and then one or two inside downstairs looking at the steps. And then you might want to throw in a third one. So that's, you know, we want to tell the story of this building. And remember, you may be exhausted by these guys, but remember that your narrative that you're actually putting on the board is what you find interesting, significant, compelling about these buildings. So you're not just going to replicate the, the, the text, you know, this is built, blah, 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 in, you know, Australia. It's like, what attracted you to this building? What is, what is uh, you know, what do you find rich and satisfying about it? I try and, uh, I try and put three of my scenes that I have through Lumion. Can I send them to you? Sure. Jump there, okay. Okay, yeah. I'll send them on whenever we're going to break. Okay. And I do know, did anyone want another look at Lumion? Because I can do it. You're going to have to stop me. No, I, I, uh, the, the trick is, the trick is that you have to log on, you have two things, you have to log on to the college computers, although some of you may have a powerful enough computer to run Lumion at home, but you link to the college computers and then you have to activate and log into your um, OneDrive, your Microsoft OneDrive, uh, which you have, and then you set it up on your local computer, which I haven't gone over how to do that. I have a Mac, so it was a little bit different than if you're doing it on a PC. And then you can, and maybe I'll show Romina's renderings for better or worse after the break. Mm -hmm. Embarrass her or not. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's, she's not easily embarrassed. It'll be fine. I don't like it. I find things to fix every time you talk for my things. So it's okay. Okay. So that's I've got that's all I've got. Should we take a break now so we can pick up later or do you want to um, let me Yeah, why don't we take a break first? Sure. We'll take okay. 10 minutes. we'll take 10 minutes now and then we'll jump into looking at some boards. Exactly. Okay. So about 5 okay. of we'll rendezvous.
All right. Okay. See you in a few. Okay, so this one is a little bit of a problem that we are way too far away. <laughs> um, we really don't want to, you know, we're out on the prairie and, you know, and, and the problem is if we really zoom in on this, we begin to really lose resolution. I tried to zoom in on um, Photoshop. When I put on Photoshop, I was trying to go a little closer. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it, it the building itself is kind of low resolution, so your your view uh, you need to work on your your view. The other two work out pretty well, so I think this That's is weird. really good. Um, you know, I, I I I you know I would love a person in there, particularly with an interior. You know, kind of feel it scale. Um, I want a person and a little dog for it, <laughs> and and a dog, <laughs> sheep dog. It's a ranch. Okay. <laughs> See what you can do. Um, and. But when you're doing that also, just to mention again, for everybody, remember if a person's going in there, you're casting a shadow, you know, across them. So just be prepared as you're setting up your sun angles, as you're leaving space on the floor for a person, just, you know, make your, make your life easier, you know, Nice light and shadows is super important, but it doesn't mean you have to have it going through a person kind of, you know, think ahead, think ahead about the finished products. So I just, you know, trying to cut out that prairie for us. Yeah. And did you, did you substitute wild grass? Cause this looks very regular. No. Yeah, I that did. would look yeah. better. It would look a lot okay. better I'll if, do that. You, uh, if you do, uh, but, so this is fine, but maybe a person. Mm -hmm. Nice, strong shadow line, so you can just kind of get that they're going to go that way. Yeah. I was going to do the people on Photoshop. Yeah. Right. That's, that's going to give you the best result. Yeah, OK. So these look good. And why, why would the image, the first one, have been so far away? That was a <laughs> SketchUp, a product of coming out of SketchUp? It's just it's probably a little frustration of dealing with setting up the view in uh, Lumion. It's like when you set up the view in Lumion, it looks closer than when uh, you save it and you go back into Photoshop or anywhere else. All the views are a little further back, oh. for, uh, which is, I don't know why, but. So, yeah, but I think they, uh, I think they look, they look quite good. I wish there was some vegetation here. Yeah. It looks, you know, it looks a little spare. A lot. <laughs> But um, so yeah, we can even, um, I could even forward these to David and you could, um, whether you, you wanna work off of these or not. Yeah, if not today, next, next class. Yeah, okay. well, I'll forward them to you. Yeah, I could try it out. Great. Yeah, beautiful light. Yeah, the light. That's my favorite part of Lumion is the light. Yeah. Just, it's amazing that it captured such a, a, a wonderful, rich. This looks so much more realistic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you've put all your work in your SketchUp model. So now, now it's the opportunity to render it. And, uh, you know, Lumion is super fast. So I'm glad. I have one view that shows the interior from the other side, like you were sitting uh, in the corner of the front and you're looking in the back. Would that be interesting? Like it shows the two chairs and the bed and the other, the back And more of the interior space looking out, I think would be interesting, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. I have one like on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this, if I could just make a comment about this one, um, the, the right-hand side, the 20% yeah. of it is all like um, just this big piece of wood yeah 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 something like that like I, I like i like some of it i mean because it, it's kind of like i'm walking around the corner it, it makes it feel like real life a little bit but um and, and it frames it yeah 
Okay. But in general, I and I don't know how you feel about it, Michael, when it cuts to portfolio time, but I would try to crop everything in SketchUp as best as possible so that I think when it gets to the portfolio, it's nice to have the same ratio throughout. Like, yeah, because if you just go to Photoshop and then you just start cropping and then you got a square next to a long rectangle next to a short rectangle, I think, I think when it gets to the portfolio pages, that's just problematic. Well, what I really prefer is to keep, to not do any cropping at all in Photoshop unless it's absolutely essential yeah. and to do the cropping instead in um, InDesign. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, because that way you can lay it out so that, you know, if, and if there's a little extra room, that's great. That'll allow you to uh, organize them. Yeah. So, because that there, with any image you bring into InDesign, it'll have a crop box around it. Mm -hmm. So, I like that kind of adjustment. I prefer doing it unless it's you know really essential. Doing it in uh, in design and not in uh, Photoshop. Yeah, that makes sense. But I would also at the same time I would say, aim for as aim for getting it right in SketchUp right off the bat. Yeah, although um, there are these fixed sizes and proportions that you get from Lumion, but yeah, get it right in SketchUp. Yeah, as soon as possible. If you get it right, then you're then the less cropping you have to do, the better. Pretty though. Oh, and the glass looks nice to get those nice reflections coming off the glass. Yeah. And did you get frames? I see frames in there. Yes, frames. Nice, nice. It makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did them. I yeah. only offset. I like I offset it like like one centimeter, like so you can tell. Kind of like I don't know if you can tell, but I try yeah. to make it visible. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's perfect. It, okay. it shows a little reveal, shows a little uh, shadow there, and the um, stove box is nice. The the gloss on it, very nice. So this is great. All right. All right. Let's look at some stuff. Okay, so you can see my uh, canvas now. All right, so this is just important, a review of what's coming up. Um, so we are in project two, Photoshop renderings and final submission. So I added some stuff, I can't help myself. I just make these modules bigger and bigger all the time. Um, so again, just the submissions, I haven't changed anything since we talked last week. So the eighth is Tuesday, two SketchUp Photoshop renderings should be underway by then. So they're drafts, but you know, they're ideally they're 80% done. You know, the, the further they are, the further we could help fine tune them. So um, two of them we'll look at on Tuesday. The third we'll look at on Thursday and a final and a, and a draft board. Um, and we're going to talk about boards next. You know, it, it, you have the final board is the 13th. Yeah, and that's Sunday. So that's a week from Sunday. So you have nine days until the final presentation board. Um, so it's a lot to do. A crazy week coming up. Let's just suffice to say that. So. Welcome to video 9 p.m. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's the layout of what's coming. This is the video that I showed you a little bit of, um, and I could show it again just to refresh your memory as to what's in it. This is the presentation, presentation boards that I'm about to show. This is related to that. Some examples of presentation boards and then two things on shadows. All right, so this is everything we'll quickly look at today. All right, okay. So let us go with presentation boards right away then. So this is presentation boards and presentation board tips. So um, so this is the PowerPoint. You can see you can see both, right? The PowerPoint and my Word document. Okay. So I just happened to come across this um, blog or whatever it is exactly. And this is the site. And basically I just took everything from it. So I kind of, I, I, I gave them credit as much as I could. This is the entire article. And it's, it's quite good. As I'll be saying again and again, a lot of this stuff is more complex than our projects. 
So it's, it was kind of harder to find good images, um, good student presentation boards. Actually, I actually have to take out some of the old ones. Um, but there's some good text here and it's, it's generally a good article. Um, so that is, that is presentation board tips right there, okay? And then this is my PowerPoint of it. All right, so that's what we're gonna take a look at now. And you all did a board, so you you know that, you know, they're fun, but they, they take time. They don't come together immediately. All right, so you can see full screen now? Yeah, okay. Yes. All right, so presentation adapted from this nice person. All right, so I'm not gonna read all of it to you. I just kind of copied and pasted a lot of it in. I underlined a couple of things that I thought were particularly important. Um, but I'm gonna let you read about it primarily and I will just kind of hit some of the highlights. Um, so before approaching a presentation board, always having your work organized, by the time you get there, um, you really should have a pretty clear understanding as to what's on the board and what's not on the board. You know, we have three renderings, a plan, a section, maybe elevations. So you should definitely know, do you have four, five, six, or seven pieces, all right? What are you trying to convey? Your best shot, the money shot, is the biggest one typically. And, but beyond that, beyond the, the biggest shot, the best shot, um, what are you trying to describe about the building? What drew you to this building originally? And that is part of what you're conveying. So if it's an interior thing, you know, typically the biggest, I think, I think there, I think typically the, um, the outside of the building should be the biggest, um, or at least one of the primary ones so that we could wrap our head around the outside of the building. There could be exceptions. You could argue that point, um, but I like to understand the outside of the building first. So, so there could be big exterior with an equally big interior. You know, if something about the interior drew, drew was especially a draw for you, or you're an interior designer and your work is focusing on interiors, um, that makes sense. That's the key elements there. Collect the information, of course, and generally start planning a structure for the board. So Michael led us with the structure of the last one, and we talked about columns versus rows, how it's going to be organized. So selecting a size, different drawing um, size papers. So this does not concern us now. We, are, we generally live in the um, Arc D, 24 by 36 land. We, you guys are doing, I think we settled on 18 by 24 again. So arc C, but in professional practice, is that, is that correct? 18 by 24 we're doing? Um, yeah, actually that would be good. Two 18 by 24s, is that what we're looking for? Oh, are we? I don't remember. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll refine this <laughs> before, before the end of class. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, there's some flexibility. I, I'd say, I'd say this project and all the projects for the, the rest of your life. I mean, it's just picking the proper size to hold the images that you have, the amount of text that you have. Is it one board? Is it two boards? Um, so we typically live in here, and in general, in, pre in professional practice, you should generally be familiar with these. A layout. Um, so working with grids. And Michael will talk a lot about this in portfolio class where things get a bit more complicated. But again, um, generally a structure working with columns, which are our vertical elements and rows, which are our horizontal elements. So yes, you could just kind of drop things onto the page and, and start kind of looking at the shapes. You know, the shapes could kind of talk to you and, and give you a sense as to how things want to be. But I would highly encourage thinking about columns and rows, columns, rows, and groups, columns, rows, groups, and hierarchy. Those are the four big ones, hierarchy, groups, columns, and rows. I think that's um, the best way to go. This is a great image, um, especially for portfolio class, less for us, but it just goes to show how the same grid, a nine square grid could, could um, be used nine different ways and more, probably um, not endless ways, but many, many ways. So this is our basic nine square grid. So if you had two boards, 
one could look like that and then you could simplify and take these six squares and make it one. So this is more relevant really for a portfolio class. But if you have two, if you have two boards, if you have two boards or you have a portfolio with 40 pages, it's still completely relevant that they should have a um, similar underlying structure. It might not be always, always readily apparent. It might not be, you know, if you glance at these two, it might not be, you know, it might not jump at you why why these are related, but um, but as you go through a portfolio, I, I, it'll it'll add a portfolio or accompanying boards. It'll 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 add visual clarity to it. I would say this is a great slide too. This is a really a very good slide. So this is a a clear breakdown of how this board is assembled, and it reads it reads that well. The board is very busy. Very big project, a ton of text, you know. So it's it's not the greatest board, perhaps for our. Um, it has maybe a little more than we need. I mean, we're going to have three renderings. We're going to have about six six to eight drawings, I would say, plus um, title. So it's it's not that far off, you know. It's just more complex, bigger project with a lot of text, but a fantastic way of breaking it down column on the right side, bottom row, second to bottom row, third row. And then the top row gets broken down further. So I think this is a great image. All right, consider visual hierarchy. Some images receive more visual attention than others. Yes, so think about your board is hanging on the wall in the student show. People are 20 feet away, it catches their eye. Then they're 10 feet away, five feet away, two feet away. More and more information kind of reveals itself. And so one big, um, typically one big image. This is really big. This, this image is over a third of the board, almost half the board, I would say. So that's, but it's an interesting image. Um, but yes, hierarchy. And, and if anything, err on the side of, of bigger images bigger primary images. Um, yes, so looking at it from a distance, six feet, et cetera, et cetera. So another big grounding image at the bottom, kind of nice. And then a lot, so again, so we have big, big image at the bottom and then three rows, one, two, three. It's not my favorite board. This is all a little, I don't know, this whole top's a little soupy, I would say, maybe. I don't know. They have these little things. It's, it's a big diagram for a complex, complex building. They're trying to in, squeeze a lot of information in there, but it's it's okay. If you have anybody has comments or questions, don't hesitate. This I like. I like the top and I like how the board is banded top and bottom, and then a lot of information in the middle. I like how the project reveals itself. Like I, you know, I'm first obviously drawn to the top, but then I get a, I get a quick a quick view of what's happening outside as well. You know, if I get frustrated when I don't understand a building quickly, or, or, or begin to get an overall sense, like if I can't get an overall sense quickly enough, I want to not get too much more involved. All right, yes, very, very important. Make sure every instance of the plan is in the same orientation, same scale and in line. That's very important. Um, so plans and sections, just as we set them up in CAD, should be one on top of the other typically. Um, and we could go back and look at some CAD drawings. Um, but yeah, so plan top right, plan bottom right. So everything should be oriented the same way. Don't flip things around, right? Here's another plan. So don't don't spin, don't spin plans around. Gener generally, the front door is facing the bottom of the board. Typically, it, there could be exceptions to that, but typically, I like to see the bottom facing down. Background: Try to keep them plain, unless it's a feature of one of your key images. White ba backgrounds generally help things stand out. This is a very attractive board, I think. Mm 
I like how the bottom is grounded. The color is beautiful too. Yeah, that yellow that's used throughout really helps the whole composition come yeah. together. And it's not, unlike some of the ones, it's it's not too busy. Yeah. You may have the advantage of some slightly simpler project, but um, it's very, very legible. Yeah. It's a big project, <laughs> plenty big. But yeah, there's a lot of nice negative space around the circles. Nice circle theme kind of complements the bubble theme. Yeah, but this is a really nice image down the bottom. So I look here first, then I go to the section, then I could check out the plans, then I could check off the check out the diagrams, and then I could go further down into site plans. And so nice, very nice hierarchy to it, I think. What to include? Um, select images and drawings that explain your design. Um, usually the basics include floor plans, elevations, maybe sections. I, I'd say definitely sections. Um, and of course, something 3D rendered. Hand drawings to show development work are good. So this pertains, this is all great advice for your studio work. These projects um, are not your designs and they're small projects. So you, you really just have what you need now, but this is a very important topic for your own studio projects. You know, you have to start thinking about the project sooner than later. Don't wait till the end. Think about what needs to be presented. Oh, so this is the same project. Um, yes. Yeah. So these boards, is this one and two or? No, these are two versions of the same. They both have floor plans and sections. I think, it, I think they're two different versions of the same. They both have site plans at least. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice grounded bottom again. Doesn't show the building as nicely as the other one. Shows the exterior deck nice. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, hierarchy. So we have the grounding bottom, two columns, big column for the floor plan and the exploded diagram. And then left-hand column, title, text, and details. Nice. I, I like this board a lot more. Information, title, story, content. Do you have a title bar? Yes. So we need, don't wait until the end to put this. All right. So next time we see each other Tuesday, get all of your text on it. All right. It's everything on the board is of equal importance. You know, we say hierarchy, but that's really just saying that one image needs to stand out. It doesn't mean that lesser images, you know, or it doesn't mean that smaller images are less important, really. Um, it just means that uh, you have to guide us through what we look at. So this board is kind of lacking in that, in that category, I would say. It's a little too jumbled. I'm not sure what to look at. I like, I like how the bottom is grounded. And we could show you some of these techniques um, today or next week. Um, so I like how this bottom black band functions. It, it holds text and it's a and it's a ground plane. So I'm kind of drawn down there to check out these elevations and sections. I could locate the plans. I see a site plan. I see this guy. And then I'm getting dizzy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff going on around here. Do they really need four of these? You know, I'd rather have two good ones that are bigger. This is mush up in the top right corner. Three views of the same model. This person needs two boards. If, if really all this stuff is worthy of showing, I would have two boards and spread it out more. Yeah, and it's, it's really, they're trying to do too much and it's jumbled where they're showing process and multiple iterations and it just needs, it needs a lot more space to be happy. Yeah. And, um, you know, that band along the top would be really good if there was progression or sequence to it, but there's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like four of the same model shots. Then we go into pathway. So clarity, clarity and space and leading your viewer. Color, black, white, gray, gray, gray. Sometimes it's good to break out and use a bit of color. So yes, in general, definitely. Um, this is pretty um, 
mild in terms of color. It's pretty, beiges, greens, yellow highlights. But again, I'd say more, I'd say yes, definitely we like our color, but think about the color that's gonna be arriving on the board while you're rendering CAD floor plans, while you're rendering things in Lumion and SketchUp and going into Photoshop. All those things are gonna live on the board together. So think ahead. This is pretty, this is, you know, nice white space. Um, I, I, I don't know, whenever they put images touching each other, mm. it, it, gets, it gets mushy to me. Yeah. I don't know why they did that, where they did preserve some gaps up at the top. Yeah, like this little gap right really there. really helps. Yeah. Um, just more examples. So these are a little too big. I'm not going to dwell on these too much because I, I have some other better examples. But um, but you should flip through these and and you know find think about think about what appeals to you. Think about what confuses you. And and I don't I try not, when I look at them I try to you know look at a distance look quickly and just get quick impressions before you know you could delve into it. But quick impressions are important. Does it does it make sense to you? These are all super complicated, but but super complicated projects aside, three columns, four row, four rows, kind of. That's okay. Top band, nice. Big primary image, some diagrams, two columns. This is a nice board. This is a nice one. Text, nice and clean. Yeah, this, I'd put this one pretty high up there. Other tips. Oh, yes. You've spent all this time, and now you're throwing your board together. Don't do that. Pay attention to negative space. Don't put useless information in there. So that's not really something we're concerned about. But yes, yes to negative space, and start the board sooner than later. All right. Um, so we'll flip through some more examples, but as Michael showed us on the first one, how connecting um, InDesign to Photoshop, to Illustrator, that yes, you should be working on the board at the same time you're working on the images. It stinks to work on your images for a month and then give your board three days. You know, the icing on the cake is so important. These boards are nice. I think generally pretty well organized. So I like this band across the bottom. Nice sections, nice color too, very gray, but the reds, the red texts are jumping out, people. So these little red highlights I like. And I like the gray kind of um, monotone. This plan looks really intense. They're nice looking boards. Now we're getting closer to our amount of stuff. Nice, nice big image, can't miss it. I don't know if this is getting cropped off the bottom of my, a little bit maybe. It's not that much really, a little bit. There we go. Nice plans, very graphic. I like how the black anchors the left side, right? So we have top row, bottom row, and then we have this grid in the middle. So we have, so a lot of them seem to have one big image and then um, rows above or below it. These look a little too similar to me down the bottom, but generally a nice looking board. This I would not try. I would not try this too soon, but <laughs> it's 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 both well done and annoying. I find it. Um, I don't know. I maybe. I, I guess like if if this is truly um, so, if that's plan north, so right there we see the north arrow. So, um, so maybe this really is the the true orientation of this building. You know. Um, or site, I guess it's a site. So that could be, 
And then we have elevations and sections also on an angle that I find a little annoying. That's disturbing. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like tw twisting my head here to look at them. But, I, but at the same time, I kind of like the white lines passing through. I think these two renderings look good. This looks good to me. It's not easy. And they did a pretty good job for something that's not easy. I would warn that you might be going down a road and the question is, is it worth it? Because you could spend a week trying to make this work and it not work. That would be my, my warning, I would say, is overly complicating things. Um, and like, so I don't know, is this, is this diagonal some part of the design? I don't even know if it is. If it's not, then, it, then it's very gratuitous. It was just like added for what reason? You know, if you have a diagonal, if you have a big diagonal in your building, then I could see a diagonal being incorporated into the board in some fashion, but turning elevations on their side is uh, going a little, little too far, I would say, or on an angle. This is a favorite board of mine. Mm. And this is really appropriate for our project. I really like the see-through bands. So this, so this background image comes all the way down to the bottom, right? There's the grass in the foreground. So this is like what Romina could do with hers where she's off in the distance, right? You could have that, that beautiful lush hillside back there, you know, and it's not demanding our attention, but it's down there, you know, that grass is at our toes, which is kind of nice. I love this dark band, you know, the trees go back here, but it's not important, but it works. This, the, the clouds, so I guess, I guess this image does get cut here, but, um, but it still reads. It's just like, these guys are up in the sky. So it's very, very cohesive. Um, we got these two bands coming. They, where they overlap, they get a little darker. These are nicely, um, nicely framed, nice amount of space around them all. There's no plan, nothing to tell us. Maybe there's another um, board that accompanies this, but like, where's the light? How library? do we make that gray area though? Like that it's a little shaded like that, yeah. Oh. That you can see through it, but. Yeah, yeah, transparent, transparent. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. the white text is nice on it, the dark. Yeah, I like it. I, I assume there's another board with some plans on it and more information, but I think it's a nice, nice example for the amount of stuff that we have. Similar to others that we saw. This one I put in as an example that I struggle with. <clears throat> so how quickly can you figure out what this is all about? The biggest image, is this the best image? I wouldn't say so. If this is about a bamboo chair. I think it's about one of these two images here. So this is confusing. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not confusing, but it's, it's not helpful. It's not as helpful as it should be. It's also doing, uh, there's, you know, there's not an overall really clear sense of organization. Uh, yeah. Even that image at the top, that should be better lit if that's a rendering. It's, mm -hmm. you know, most of the options shadow and it's done one cardinal thing, which I really dislike in any presentation board, all caps, very oh, hard yeah. to read. Yeah. And they're just not aligning very well with anything. They're just, yeah. they, it just feels, um, there's been a lot of work here, but it feels very thrown together, but stuff is not really, it could easily be tweaked and aligned, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Like just even like, so we say there's this text, right? The text is furthest right. And that looks like it comes in a little bit. That comes in a little bit. That comes in a little bit. There's a, a, a row that starts here and then it ends. So these, so there's a row and there's a row. Then we have this anchor that just kind of has this trail coming down this way. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And I agree with the capitals. I don't think I noticed that. Um, so consciously, but yeah. So this is the first good draft, then it needs more work. Another graphically compelling one. This might go with the others. Is that the same people? Alex? The same firm, yeah. 
Hography. Is this the same building? That's not the same building, is it? But I don't think it's the same. It could be, unless they that's, that's their shade line. Has that angle? Yeah. Coming through a glass thing. That might be it. Yeah. yeah that it might be it. Oh, these might go together. Actually, okay. I should put them together then. Yeah. Oh yeah, same band. So this is I'll put I'll put them on the same slide afterwards. That would make sense. But again, graphically, um, quite compelling. Nice early drawings, diagram. And some of you, there are some diagrams. You could add diagrams. Nice diagram there. I prefer the other board more, but quite nice. Oh, and there we go, some color. Big project, but pretty well organized. So big band on the bottom, everybody sits down there nicely. Big band across the top. And this is nice. I mean, this band is big and black. Um, title, information, diagrams. So this the guy is bound with top and bottom black bands. A row. This is nicely grouped. And this is something else you could do. You know, in general, I would go with white boards, but if if you want to group to, if you want to group your CAD, for instance, maybe a light background behind it could um, you know, a light gray or a subtle color. Depends on your board, you know. We, it, you can't say yes or no to color until you see it really. Um, Pretty nice though. I don't know, the text is kind of in the middle. It's a little weird, but, but pretty well organized. All right, let me show some more examples that I had. Um, what time is it? Three, all right, let me just show one more set of examples quickly and then we'll look at a quick, some quick Photoshop. Um, what am I looking for? Sixty presentation presentation boards examples. All right, so we saw this. All right, so some more. I don't even remember this one. These are some newer examples I found. So that's too crazy. I'm not sure why I added that. That's pretty ambitious, but um, interesting, but not a great example. That's. That's interesting. Graphically pretty uh, arresting, I'd say, this shape up at the top. I kind of like it. Yeah. That's nice. So this is a better diagonal. I don't know what it's following. It's following that section there. Yeah, it looks yeah. like they've got a couple diagonals going on. So it, it makes sense to do that. And yeah. it's easier because it's maintaining the horizontal too. Ah, uh, yes. A lot yes. easier to keep, whereas the other was, you know, twisting the horizontal. Yeah. And that's just kind of disquieting. Yeah. Yeah. This facade has some diagonals on it. Kind of nice. These arrows are kind of subtle, but they're taking us from the room to the interior, the outside of the house to the inside view. I kind of like that. It's a little dark, I would say. Like this is dark. Yeah, I would say everything looks this. I'd say everything looks a little dark to me, but but generally pretty nice. A lot of space up there for the birds. Mm. Plan is getting completely lost in the neighbor's house there. That's a problem. I assume there's yeah, there's something going on in there. 
but kind of nice how the section grounds it. These plans are good. Um, I don't know, like, so this bubble, they, they have white behind it. This bubble, they have pavement behind it. I'm not sure why. I don't know, maybe the bubbles are a little gratuitous because there are no other circles. I think we saw a better example of circles before, but, but a beautiful rendering, um, beautiful but empty sky, and I do like the sections. This is, um, I don't know, too boxy, a lot of boxes. Too many images too. Yeah. Redundant. Yeah. Same scale images. So then I think that's an important thing that you should all think about, you know, these two are like the same, same size images. These two are like the same size of like the scale. So even if you have a small house, um, you know, give us, you know, not at a far, far distance, but approaching the house, standing on the deck, stepping inside, different scale, um, different views, but also at different scales. It's okay. I kind of like the landscape. I don't know. It's all right. It's a little... Yeah, I kind of like it. I'd have to look at it to see if I could really understand it, but it looks like a looks like a landscape plan. It's outside, a little wilderness like. Pretty nice images, whatever, however they were made. Mm -hmm. This one we saw, saw, saw. We didn't see this. Is it? Is the same group, same same house, different board. This is also nice. Maybe maybe it's redundant. Down the bottom, perhaps. Yeah, just, we only probably need one of those views. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and, and less stuff allows you to get bigger. You know, it's nice to. I, you know, in person, it's we we get we have the pleasure of seeing the whole board at once, um, and stepping closer. And I don't know, I find having to zoom in kind of annoying. Um, you know, I will do it for 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 a detailed plan if it's worth it. But like these renderings, I I'd rather just see them. I mean, it depends on your size of your computer and whatnot, I guess. But um, I don't know. I just feel like you shouldn't have to do too much zooming and panning. So less stuff allows for bigger images. Okay, questions about boards? Those are some ideas um, or just some general concerns, thoughts. So, you know, we're not giving you a template and your projects will be diverging and being more different than others. So, um, so we expect, you know, we expect difference and um, a more, more unique approach. All right, so that's a little bit on presentation boards. And then let's look at a little bit of Photoshop. Um, so, all right, we have a little bit of time left. Um, so what is in Photoshop here? So this is the video. So yes, yeah, shadows. So shadows, creating shadows and people. That's really what I wanted to look at the most. Um, but if you have Photoshop questions, now is a good time. So let me just show this though first. So this, I just did this on break in 10 minutes. Um, and it was because of that lounge house. Like I'm really, I was struggling to, I am struggling to wrap my head around how to do this. Um, so I just tried this and, I, and I'm making no promises that it's gonna work out nicely. Um, and I will go to, let me actually, before I do this, let me just quickly go to Google one more time as a refresher and show you how I got these images. Yes. So Google advanced image search, um, architectural entourage people photographs. So that's my common one. Size is up at two megs, of course. And then we search. Um, so 
and I'll get back to people. I'll take a quick look at them again. So for the lounge, I wanted to start figuring, I just gave it only a little bit of thought and time, but how to find a landscape for this thing. So first I started with the specific um, town in Mexico and that didn't work out well. And then I went to Mexico and then I went to South America and now I'm at tropical. So tropical forest hillside got me some results that are beginning to be to help be helpful. All right. So part of this is definitely as you've gotten a sense, I think from our desert project, um, figuring out how to find images, how to hunt for them. Um, so for those of you who are on the uh, lounge, this is as far as I could take you at this point. If I find more, I will let you know. Then I took out hillside and I got into tropical forests. And I, and I also put the word photography in. Um, you get some really pretty stunning images. Brings up different types of images. And that could help, that might help. So I think that, that might be a good tip. Throw the word photography in and see what that does for you. Um, and then I went and found a small building. So my point being, how do you get a building into a complicated landscape? Or how do you, in Photoshop, how do you wrap a complicated landscape around your building? So this is just, I, again, I only gave this 10 minutes, so I'm not making any promises. Um, so I opened up my project. I dragged in the house. So now I got my house on top of my lush landscape. I selected, I used the polygonal lasso and selected the house. I had to cut out the cat, sorry. And the, it's, on a it's on a flat bed there. So I got rid of that. I just went with the house. I selected the inverse and I cut it out. And that should be easy for all of you. Deselect, free transformed it. Duplicated, I duplicated the background layer, shut down the transparency on the background layer. I put the house behind the forest. I added a rectangle behind it. So it went from, just move this aside. Um, So I dropped the transparency of my background to 83%. And now this is standing out because it's the, it, my, my, my trees are in front of the house. That's how I want it. Um, typically, we put, typically we put the landscape behind the house, but I wanted to try it differently. That's my point here. So I have the forest in front, the house is behind, and that's why this part is intense. So if I select that guy, nope. I don't know if I could you know, let me select this guy. No, it's always jumping to that layer. But anyway, you get the you get the sense, right? I got a transparent background on top of a house. Um, where am I? Oh no, I just lost my history. <laughs> okay, so now I'll so this is where I am. And what I was gonna do, what I was wondering is gonna work. What happened if I start erasing some of this landscape? So first I put in a background so I could see a little more clearly. So I put in my white background, drop that down to the bottom. So now the transparency isn't, um, the background transparency is not as intense, but I still will still take it down a little bit. And then what I was wondering, and I think this might work, um, if I pull out my eraser and erasers like paintbrushes have their own transparency. So, Let's just, let me just show you. If I get on this background layer and I have my eraser at 100%, it's, it's actually, hold on. If I have my eraser at 100%, it's gonna erase everything. If I set my eraser to 50%, it's only taking away 50%, okay? I could set my eraser to 20% and then it takes away 20%. All right, everybody could see that. And this is this is a pretty powerful tool to understand that, all right? So 100% opacity, 50, 25. 
Now different, different from opacity, but very much related is the flow. And brushes have this and so do erasers. So if my flow is at 100%, it looks just like 100% opacity, right? Same difference. But if I take my flow down to 50%, let's take it down a little further. If I take it down to 25%, It looks, it looks like opacity, it looks the same, but the difference with flow is that you could keep going and, it, and, it's, and it's cumulative, it keeps adding. So it allows you to do things slowly. So if you're not sure, so I'm gonna take it down to five, five let's take it down to 5%. So you could, you could probably barely see that. I could just about see it on my monitor. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So it's, it has a nice cumulative effect to it, all right? So my point being, my point being, if we come back to the house and we drop the opacity or drop the flow, and I went with a hard brush, smallish in size, and I want to make this thing look like it's, and now I'm getting on the layer of the, hmm, that's a good question. I'm going to, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get on this layer right here. And I am going to select this thing first. So I'm holding shift, selecting this whole layer, and that worked pretty well. So this is a super important point to understand the, um, understand um, some of the, what you could do with Photoshop and, and how, to, how to move from layer to layer. So now I've selected this guy, turned him on, I'm jumping back onto the forest now made my selection of the house, jumped onto the forest, back to my eraser, flow is at 20%. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And then too much, maybe. Where'd my building go? I'm on the wrong layer. See, I'm erasing, I'm erasing my house. One more time. Background copy, low flow. And now my house is gonna start peeking out from the woods. And when I was doing this, a very, I think, important point is that hyperrealism is not the goal. As much as we love Lumion, um, I, I don't think, I, I don't think you're falling short if it doesn't look super real. Like all these, a lot of these things that we were looking at, um, so we could kind of come out behind the tree a little bit if we want to be, have the tree in front of us. And the flow is what's making this really kind of nice and easy actually. So not brilliant, but, um, a different kind of approach to to that to that project rather than just dropping if if I, if I just dropped this lush forest behind this box it would not it would not look nice you know if i bring it down you know it's it's weird that it's floating it doesn't have any shadow it doesn't make sense but i i kind of like the interaction between the between the trees and you could really kind of brighten up you know, so I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, and then I like the, the trees are kind of coming up from the bottom a little bit and then back there it disappears a little bit. So now, now I erase the trees because I didn't have that selection, but very important. The reason I had that selection was that the, my big paintbrush was living within that selection. It would not go outside. Now that that selection is no longer made, that's why I just messed up right there and I, um, I erased too much. I erased beyond the house. So that was because I lost my selection whenever my selection went away. But I, 
I think this might be a decent approach for, um, especially for the lounge where it's so wooded that maybe the landscape is actually in front of the building. If the, if the landscape went to the back now, no, see, it doesn't work. I don't think you would ever get this to work with the, with the, with the um, landscape behind. I mean, maybe, maybe if we had the sketch up down here, the sketch up terrain, and we added some more texture to it, perhaps. Um, but I think this could be an approach to the lounge in particular. And equally important, I would not, I would not, so I would not get overly frustrated if it's not um, hyper real. That's not always the goal. You know, you need shadows to make people sit stand on the ground. You know, there are certain things that you expect, but um, I don't know. I kind of like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So just a, just a different approach, different idea. Okay. Um, so let's look at some people. So the video that is in Canvas at that location, we've got four o'clock, will be, be about 10 minutes and we'll wrap this up and I'll take any questions on this stuff. Um, so this is the video, SketchUp adding entourage in Photoshop. I made it for my studio class. Um, so what did we do? Oh, so let me just actually bring that video up quickly. Is this the video? Yes, so this is the video. I'll just show you. So um, the SketchUp stuff is exactly what Michael went over, just framing the composition, focal length, moving the light through, creating the scene, getting it out of SketchUp. And now we're into Photoshop, opening up images in Photoshop, checking resolution as always, Resolution, getting these things just the way we want them to get started. Then I went into, so I'm not gonna go over this in detail. You guys should know this, you, should, you do know this, I know. But here in the video, I went again into advanced search, talking about different images, talked about the, the entourage. And I do this systematically, I do it all, I find six images to work with. I open them all. I go through all of the resolution together. And this is an important part of the video um, where I talk about the size of this image, right? So this image is 24 by 13. So all those things that I'm adding to it have to work with that. So now here she is, and I can get her to be up to seven inches tall. Here's my background, whatever size it was. Here's the artwork that I want on the wall. At the proper resolution, can I get it to the size that I need it to be? Next guy, so I went through everybody. Here I cut out the background. So Romina, if you're finding images with backgrounds, I got rid of this background very easily. It's just really an erasing thing. I had to move it off the background layer, which is locked. So sometimes, Images we find off of Google come in locked. That won't allow you to do anything. So du duplicate the layer, turn off the background, get off a locked layer, and then her background goes away. Super easy for her because she's got super sharp shapes and her shadow is super sharp as well. If you got somebody with hair going off in every direction, it's not, you're gonna be struggling. So find nice clean images to work with. Saving the images, images, images. Moving all the images into the file. I do it all at once. I don't care to do one thing at a time. Um, and I like to do it systematically. Six, I, I find it faster and less chance to make an error. Open up six at a time, do all the resolutions, bring them all in, um, stack them. Now they're all in there start sorting them out, renaming my layers appropriately. Backgrounds, so for those of you, we didn't, so you did backgrounds beyond the 
this is important too. We did we did backgrounds that were beyond the desert shelter, but we didn't do it through windows. So pay attention to you know how I do this window, and you know pay attention you know looking outside at a distance um, how things are not as crisp. You know we don't want our windows to look like um, TV screens. So here's my window. I made my room. I dropped the transparency on my room so that I could see this guy as I decide what do I want to look at? Do I want to look at the bottom of the image? And I think I settled on, I didn't want to look at the top. I don't want to, I don't want busy army of soldiers there. I want background is background. So I think I settled on treetops interesting facades and treetops. I didn't want the ground and I didn't want rooftops. Rooftops are too busy. And that's, I think, how I kind of settled. So transparency down, fading to the background. Coming in, people, what to do with shadows. So this is an important point too right here. So here she comes, her shadow hits the wall. It's not gonna go into the wall like that, right? When a shadow hits a wall, it goes up the wall then. So what I wanna do is, so I duplicated her, here's her second shadow. So I want this top half, I want her torso, but I want it going up. So I'm gonna cut off this part here polygonal lasso straight, clean, right at the floor line, quick around the end, don't care. Because the only thing on this layer, I'm on her layer, the only thing is this shadow. You know, the wall's not on that layer, nothing else. So all I wanna do is, kept, is just cut that out. So delete, and now that's gone, right? So I cut it off and then I brought her second, I brought her twin over. Again, aligning that shadow. And then I started playing with the skew and I wanted to get the shadow of the same depth, but it wasn't working. I couldn't stretch it in the way that I wanted to. Um, what I did here, also important, I, I capture the shadow and the shadow on the wall needs to be the same color as her shadow needs to be the same color as the wall shadow. So I went in, all right, I get back to that. I come back to that, I guess. Artwork on the wall, you guys are probably not gonna be doing this. Talking about the perspective tool, new people coming, friends. Where do people stand? Proper heights. This is 12 feet tall. So this is about coming, hanging at about five, six feet. You could bring people all the way to the foreground and chop them off. This, this guy was looking awkward to me as I was doing that. So I wasn't happy with any of those solutions. And what am I doing now? Oh, so now I want white walls, slightly gray. I kept the white shadow and I wanted slightly gray walls. People are back. Cropping it down a little bit. Let me just keep going, going, going. All right, so now I get back to her shadow. This is worth seeing. I, you know, I, I say I do a great job with it. I did it kind of quick, but um, so I am, and her, so this is important too, very important. So her shadow on the floor needs to be the same color as the floor, right? She can't have a darker shadow. So I selected with the polygonal lasso, I selected her shadow into the color, my light gray color. I got my color picker, picked it off there and I just dropped it right on top. So I, I didn't even erase her shadow. She just has her own layer that's called woman's shadow. So there's a light gray that's completely opaque on top of the dark gray. 
And then I just went in and finished this drawing and just created a uh, shape and filled that in. Over to him, different way of making the shadow, right? A little bit of painting. And that was that. So refresher, quick refresher now. Everything's in the video if you need any of those steps. Now let me just look at Photoshop. So now we are in Photoshop with the finished product here. Wait, nope, that's not Photoshop, that's my video. Now we're in Photoshop. History I don't need. So she came out all right. So let's just actually look at it. Um, so, I mean, it's peculiar. It's obviously, you know, this was a 45 minute ordeal. So, um, or an hour maybe, but um, yeah, now I'm not so convinced. I think I, I think I added color back to this actually. That looks really washed out and gray. I think I added a little bit more color. Her shadow is decent. And then this guy. So this is what I wanted to show um, is how to create these other guys, partners, friends. Um, so we have him and one thing, I mean, we could do, sometimes we ghost people. That's an option. Let's just duplicate him and compare. Um, so, and, and do a couple, do, you know, experiment, experiment. And, and if you want, submit something like this for the draft and we could decide, um, man, Man as ghost. And then, so I duplicate the layer, it's right on top. Man as ghost. I don't like him in front of the window. When, when, you, have, when you have things like that piling up on a ghosted person, it becomes distracting. Let's get the man moved. Whoops, come on, man. All right, so we have man, we have man ghost. And then for this guy, um, going back to canvas one time quickly. So here, Photoshop shadow notes and creating a shadow in Photoshop. So I think the notes we went over last time, I'm not sure if I went over this, but they're both here, how to do this now. So, um, so this is the color fill. Let's just turn him off and start from scratch. So I went to man. There he is. And here's the cheat sheet, what it looks like. So it's simply this. It's called creating a shadow. And this is, so you guys saw this, I believe. And this is the whole thing where we um, laid the shadow down. So we duplicated it. Um, to create a shadow. I'm not creating a shadow now. I just want to show you how to create the, how just to use it as a person actually, which I think is kind of, could be interesting, um, but it's the same technique. So we duplicate the layer, man as solid fill. Okay. There's my second man. And then per the instructions, Duplicate, so I said name it a shadow. I'm not making him a shadow. Go to layer, new fill layer, solid color, and check the box for the clipping mask. Layer, new fill layer, solid color. I'm on his layer. There he is, third, third man. Layer, what did I say? New, what did I say? New fill layer, solid color right there. So you should have, you probably did this for the first go around. There's my box. Use the previous layer. Select color. I don't know why this isn't letting me. Oh, hold on. I think it wasn't letting me make choices. Before I go into that, let me get my color picker. That box was only giving me uh, about like six colors to choose from for some reason. Where's my color picker? Here. Um, so, how about if, all right, so if I wanted the red skirt color, for instance, let's just see if this works. I'm on the correct layer, um, layer, new fill layer, solid color. See, it's saying no color. I don't know why that is. 
And I did it before. I just went with gray, which gray is fine, but what if I want red? Me? I don't know why that is. That's strange. Usually for all the others, whenever I was doing shadows with this procedure, I was just picking up like a color off the grass or something like that. So I'm confused. For the purpose of, of a person, gray is fine. Um, I'll look at that again. Oh, wait, nope, it worked. Okay. All right, so it worked. I don't know why that box says gray and then none selected. Um, okay, so let me just do that one more time then. So what color do I want? I don't know, let's take the blue off the pants then maybe. All right, so it's like a gray off the pants just to pick something different. All right, so one more time, layer, new fill layer, solid color, use the clipping mask, okay. Yes, I could pick another color and there it is. So kind of an off white, off gray. Then opacity, um, well, no, I don't wanna, well, no, I don't wanna do opacity, that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna say that I'm not happy with that choice of color, it's too dark. I'm gonna go back one more time. I'm gonna open this guy up, bring my gray down. Um, I want a gray that's, I want a gray that's, maybe, maybe that is the gray. I, I'm thinking I want a gray that's darker than the back wall. I don't know, we could try both. Um, let's try, all right, let's try a dark gray. Okay, correct layer. Layer, solid color, good, good. Okay, so that's one. And then, then I'll just show you how I did this guy, one more guy. Um, so I created this guy and this we didn't go over I talked about it when we came to shadows, but I didn't talk about it much. So this guy is a function of right here, blending modes. These are pretty interesting actually. So that's normal. And what it's doing is blending the layer that I am on right here, this guy, it is blending him with whatever's behind it. All right, I'm gonna move him a little bit actually. But let's just see, let's just see how this blending changes. I like, I like this guy, I think he's pretty cool. Let me divide him, let me just duplicate him one more time. All right, so I'm gonna do this guy. So I kind of like this one. Um, it has just you know, a little more definition, but this guy, the copy, so these are the blending modes, normal, dissolve, darken. So pay attention to what's happening. See, watch his head in relation to the background out there watch his body in relation to the SketchUp model. So more intense color, more color. Now this group is gonna lighten, he disappears, too light. I don't know, too light in general. Yeah, disappearing, overlay, hard light, vivid light. That could be kind of interesting maybe. Again, these people are not here to distract. That's a big point. I think I, I like divide the best, use saturation. So that's my divide. That's what I settled on, divide. Um, let me just turn him off. So these are the four guys that I came up with. And this is the divide function. And just a little different. Um, I mean, you could do an all white guy too, I guess. I'm not sure. They might stand out a little too much. What do you think, Michael, of my army of guys? You know, pistons. Yeah, I mean, the white could kind of work too. Just plain white. Yeah. Just because there's the other white in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, yeah, but a variety of a variety of techniques for a little more um, a little more choice. And it, you know, again, it depends. It is, is is your rendering coming out of Lumion? Then then a more intense person would make sense. If it's going to be very sketchy like this, and this this could be acceptable, you know, for. Um, it, you know, we're doing more for our project than this empty room. 
um, or gray room, but for quick studies, you know, for your upcoming studio work, there's no shame in a sim simple gray room like this, just to start looking at volume and just drop a person in for scale. So, um, you know, not all quote unquote renderings are, you know, highly finished, polished, hyper real products. Okay, that's it. It's quarter after. Questions? Oh, yeah. And then where did this guy come from? Can't get all my guys out. There he goes. This guy. All right. So now he's on his little shadow again. I, so I, I made that little shadow. So I made that little shadow just with a paintbrush. You know, nothing pretty. You know. My goal would be that you, you wouldn't even notice it really. So man shadow right there, you know, but I mean, just glancing at it, it doesn't look odd. He doesn't cast any shadow whatsoever. You know, she's getting a shadow from the sun coming through the window, but this guy, you know, he's at least under the lights, you know, so just that little ad, you know, not, not well-defined, you know, diffuse artificial light overhead, just a little kind of blobby thing. Um, but then also we could also go and do a blend mode with this guy. I'll zoom in so you can see. So you see his shadow is changing as well. This would be more interesting if, you know, if you had a pattern underneath the floor, this, this blending mode could be more helpful then. Right now it's kind of a, um, not very exciting differences, but, as patterns and things build up, um, it has more potential. More potential to be crazy and wrong, but also more potential to find something interesting out of it. Okay, that's all I got. Photoshop questions, technical issues before we depart. Presentation board questions, general questions about what's due. No questions. All right. Anything else, Michael? Well, so everybody's clear. Two two renderings on Tuesday, one o'clock. I put one o'clock. I'm not going to have a chance to look at them before, so you can work right up until class. Two renderings. The more that's in there, the more feedback we could give you. You know, if it's if it's only quarter baked. We can't talk about it as much. If it's if it's seventy five percent baked, then we could uh, you know there's more for us to dig into to help you fine tune it. So push as much as you could to get those because you know then everything else is due second half of the week. So be productive. Show us and if you're not sure about your third view or any view for that matter, show us multiple views. You could submit as much as you need to. We'll look at it. We'll comment on it. We love commenting. And editing too, so you know, yeah. it's 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 more helpful if you come at us with more views, and then we can yeah. kind of help you lose the ones that aren't as successful. Definitely, and good practice for you on, when you're on your own. Just make six if you need three. Make six. Two from a distance, two medium distance, two inside, and then you have, you stand a much better chance of making good good views, much better. Any questions, anybody? All right, have a good and productive weekend then. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you too. Right. See you bye -bye. Tuesday, have a good one. Thank you.